Okay guys, I just wanted to show you, um, I guess sort of a little recipe that I've come up with to do a double-sided 3D object um, in Fusion 360, mainly for woodworking. Um, I guess it's like not truly double-sided in that basically what you do is you cut the two halves separate and then glue them together. Um, but I wanted it to be a 3D, basically an organic shape. Uh, and, and so this is sort of the, the method that I came up with. And I think it would apply to sort of any, uh, you know, you could download any sort of image off the web of like, let's say a Fleur de Lis or whatever, and then apply this method to make it three dimensional. So what I wanted to do here is a case of uh, the, uh, the bear fetishes, this little Native American uh, bear symbol. And so the way that I went about doing that, I'll just walk you through the modeling first in Fusion 360, and then we'll walk through the cam. So I started with a image. So um, here's the uh, here's the image that I grabbed off the web that had the general shape that I wanted. So I added a canvas, um, and you just select the image and tell it what plane you want, want it on. I just put it on the XY plane there. And then what I did is I made a sketch on top of that to give me the basic shape that I wanted. So I used some curves. Uh, you can see I didn't follow their sketch exactly, but I got sort of the general shape that I wanted. And uh, and also I went ahead and sketched out some curves for this arrow and I moved it around a bit and I moved his eye a little bit. And You can do whatever you want there. The general idea is just make a sketch on top of the canvas. Then what I did, and this is sort of the, the, the neat part, is I took and added a, a form uh, on top of it. In this case, I just have sort of like a, a sphere shape that I smushed. So you can come in here and you can create form and there's all different types of like squares and meshes you can add. And I just added a sphere and then scaled it in two directions because I wanted my bear to be kind of a kind of this shape. Um, so you can move it around, size it, and you can do this with any shape you want. Um, then once you have that, this is the cool part, you do a split. And so what you do is you're basically going to basically use the sketch as a knife to slice this shape um, like this. So when you do that, when you do this split, which is under create or modify uh, split body, it says create new bodies by dividing selected bodies using a profile face or plane. So you just select that, that organic shape then you select the outline of that sketch and tell it to slice and it's going to make a new body um, this one uh, so so that's that's your that's your basic shape right there and then I went ahead and did another split to split that shape on the XY plane so I have two halves if that makes sense so the first one split from the sketch all the way through the second one splits it in this plane and so I wind up with uh, you know a body above and a body below this plane those are effectively going to be the two parts that you're going to mill out and then glue together so I did a boundary fill just to make sure there's no holes I did this boundary fill operation which gives me yet another new body just on the top half which is this half here and it makes a new body for you I did a boundary fill I'm not sure if I had to do that but that's supposed to just clean it up make sure there's no holes and then uh, I just ignored the previous body from below before and mirrored that, uh, did a mirror operation about the XY plane to duplicate that whole body. So now I've got this mirror operation and whatever I do to this one uh, happened to the one below. So now I've got these two bodies above and below the plane. I'm going to take the body on the bottom and just move it, flip it over. So I basically rotated it uh, and then I'm going to translate it around to try to move it and fit on the smallest piece of wood that I can. I'm leaving some room for some bits to go around, but the idea is I want to have one square piece of wood and cut both of them out and save as much wood as I can. Um, that's pretty much it. These two sketches here, the first sketch that I did is I just went and added some points on the, the XY plane around this one, and that's because I needed, when I was doing the cam, I wanted to add tabs in certain spots, and it made it difficult to select where I wanted the tabs, but if you have points there, on that XY plane, then you just click them and say you wanted a tab there and you can you know, position your tabs wherever you want it. And I already had plenty of points on this one from the sketch. And then um, the last one was just, I wanted to go ahead and make that little arrow 
on both this is completely optional because you may not be doing any V carving but I, I wanted to try to do a little V carve that followed the surface to make this uh, what the Native Americans call a lifeline on the bear and um, I found the V carving stuff in Fusion 360 to be one of the only things uh, that's really lacking it's not really that great but in this case I wanted it to follow a 3D shape um, so anyway, I, I, most of my V carving I do in uh, F engrave, which I really, really enjoy. But in this case, uh, that may not apply to you. But if you want to do that, you'll need to, if you want to follow this recipe, you'll want to make the sketch that you want the V carve to follow on the XY plane, not on the body. And I'll show you why in a second. So that's basically the modeling. Okay, now let me show you the cam. So if we switch over to the cam section, um, the first operation that I want to do uh, is a rough clear so you can see my stock that I've got set up here okay this is the uh, I forget what size stock I have let's see if I edit this setup uh, yeah so I think what is that six inches by six inches I don't remember but anyway it's something like that on some three-quarter inch wood so what I need to do is basically remove you can see that the bears don't go quite to the top so I have to have a rough clearing operation to clear most of this stuff out so I use a quarter inch bit, let me cancel this, and do this first pocket operation. So uh, if you edit this, um, you can see that basically I did a pocket and for the geometry I selected these two chains and did tool outside boundary. Um, for heights, I sort of stuck with the standard, you know, the going from the stock bottom. Uh, oh, actually, the bottom I raised up a bit because I didn't want to try to clear out below. So I just sort of went up above and said, don't clear any lower than that. Um, and for passes, I left some stock to leave, so about half a millimeter radial and half a millimeter axial. And that's because this is not a finishing pass, right? This is just uh, a, a clearing operation. So we did some stock to leave there. Um, so anyway, that's the pocket operation. Um, we can go ahead and do generate toolpath there. And that's what the toolpath looks like with the quarter inch bit. The next thing is to take a ball nose in in mill and do like a parallel and that's what gives you sort of your your smoother shape so if we look at that operation um, the geometry is going to be silhouette tool center on the boundary um, I think a lot of these are defaults heights um, went all the way to the bottom this time but the machining boundary is going to keep it sort of over the, the bear here. Um, then the passes. I think pretty much all this stuff is all the faults. I set it to go both ways. Um, so anyway, I'm just putting some of these screens and videos in case people want to see them uh, for reference. But I believe a lot of this stuff was the faults. Uh, stock to leave there's no stock to leave so this time you want it to go all the way there's my um, heights and so that's pretty much it and of course this one's a eighth inch ball nose end mill so that'll calculate that path and you'll see the parallel going across So this one will be optional. This is our engraved steps. Um, so this again is just something I wanted to do uh, 
I had to do this project operation, which I believe is a 3D project here. But finishing a strategy that allows you to machine along contours with the center of the tool uh, so they do not have to be on the actual surface or projected onto the surface. So project is commonly used for engraving text or symbols on a surface. So that's what I did um, under geometry. You come in here and you select the chains that you want to engrave. I did the two separately, so this is the first one. Um, one of the problems I've had is just defining a V-bit in, in Fusion 360. Uh, you would think there'd just be a bit type where you could select V-bit, but I had to select, uh, I think, a chamfer um, mill and make my own. And I had to... I had to change one of these, yeah, the tip diameter. If I put this to zero, which is what you would think it would be, um, the Fusion 360 just sort of crashes. So I just had to make it something very small to make my own V-bit. I wish I knew a better way to do this. So if anyone knows, please let me know. But that's how I made my 60 degree V-bit. Also, it I, I labeled it as 60 degree. I think in here, uh, you have to put the taper angle at 30 degrees. And um, so that's a little bit odd, but I think they basically are asking for the half angle there. I think, again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So you do that, you select the geometry, and then you're also going to um, give it the heights and it's going to follow the boundaries of the, uh, let me just go through the other screens in case people want to see him. The actual offset basically is what you use to tell it how deep you want it to go. Um, so there's the last tab there. And uh, so you'll see the path that it generates there. So this is the other one. Um, so we're almost done. This top and bottom contour is uh, basically to cut out the actual part. So we're going to cut it out and we're going to use tabs to keep it in there from flying out. So I use an eighth inch flat bit here. For geometry, I just selected the two chains again. Um, I put some tabs. So I, I use four millimeter wide tabs and one millimeter high. Uh, and then I selected at points and went around and selected various points where I wanted tabs and moved them. You can see them there. And that's where those points on that sketch came in very handy to position the tabs. So uh, that's the main cutout. Now, for this recipe, you're going to have two sides of this thing. Plus, it makes it look really nice if you have a piece of wood that's a... Um, a contrasting color so if you want a third piece of wood that's flat between these two so to cut that out basically if you do just another contour operation but you change the heights so it starts smaller because I use an, uh, an eighth inch piece of wood there uh, so this is just a duplicated operation with the same bit and everything the same the only thing is I come in the heights thing and I set the top to be much lower so that it's uh, it's only doing the bottom portion there and so you can see that path there. It's basically the, almost the same as this one, except it's not going quite as deep through and it's not starting as high. So that's pretty much all of the cam and with this recipe you wind up with uh, these two pieces plus uh, a flat piece you, you know the, the cam for the flat the, the eighth inch piece is going to be you'll get two of them out of one job obviously but if 
you take these two pieces and one of the eighth inch pieces and glue them together, you'll get what you see in my, in my videos and my pictures.